So as doing this whole breakdown here, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you were going to talk a little bit about House Dairy here and some yep. of the theories and stuff surrounding it. Because we're talking all these different identities, all these different theories. Yeah. It's just endless. Um, you know, it one is. in that there are a lot of secret identities. And the other that we've confirmed that there are just a lot of people when you really look at it. Yeah, I guess they actually did have a secret identity for a little bit. And the way George writes is he writes in all these ways where you're like, well, who's this person's father? He leaves it ambiguous to cause you to go down the rabbit hole of like, who is this person's father? Who is actually this person? So that's just how he writes it. Right. Yeah, it, it's 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 uh, fascinating when you think about um, just all these different because because when I was reading. So this all comes from, you know, Matt, Matt sends me down a rabbit hole of Bonifer Hasty. Uh, looking that kind of stuff up i'm already reading uh a jamie chapter in i think it's a feast for crows i have to, I have to mm -hmm. check her maybe it's, yeah, yeah either way um it's about house dairy he's on his way excuse me on his way to um the siege at river run mm -hmm. and uh, he has to stop at house dairy and I, re I was thinking back to you remember when we were doing our game of thrones uh our our you know read through we get to house dairy and there is uh, Tyrion and Jamie find those uh, Targaryen banners. Yes. Tucked away. They look at the walls. They see that these banners had been taken down. They can see where the stone is black and where it's white, um, which is interesting. And, and then, you know, something has been removed and nothing has been hung up in their place to disguise. Like you didn't put up uh, Robert Baratheon or other. You, you didn't replace the banners that you took down which is a, a key that they're still kind of holding out for, um, you know, possible Targaryen returning to, to, to power. They, they yeah. find these things, right? I mean, like it was, it happened so early. George lets us know in a game of Thrones that that happens, that uh, it, it's, it's like, okay, that's one thing. He just, he shows us that it's there. When George comes back to something again, later on, Jamie is there and he's there to see his cousin, Lancel Lannister. And he won't really, I don't even know if he's consummated the marriage or what all he's, he's, he's not sleeping with his wife. He's down, he's going through his whole uh, religious sort of um, undertaking, repenting for his sins, all of that stuff. And Jamie notices something's not right. And this is where uh, the, the phrase is through like the female line of House Dairy. They're still alive. But the male heirs are not there. Lancel is in charge. We'll talk about the bastards here in a second. That's a whole other other theory. But the fact that Jamie is there and he recalls the first time, the last time that he was there with Tyrion, and he, he recalls those uh, those banners. So he does it a second time, books later. And to me, it just it made me think like, okay, this is a house that is still loyal in in, in a lot of ways, whether it's in this in their servants. Um, whether it's through the bastards or, or whatever, but like over, over time, they have, um, they have kept the faith, if you will. And Viserys in the first book also mentions that house dairy is one of those houses that would answer the call when they returned, when they came back, house dairy would be one of those. And so I started thinking like, yeah, what are some of these other factions and groups or people that would rally, I guess, to a young Griff or to Danny and House Dairy is right at the top. And then you and we're talking Willem Dairy, right? Freaking Willem Dairy is the one who spirit who takes away uh, Danny and Viserys helps raise them. So like that's kind of a big deal, right? That they're there from the beginning. They're very important in the secret in the un the secrets of Daenerys Stormborn, right? So there's all this mystery about Lemon Gate and and where they went. Did they go down to Dorne? Um, where do lemon trees grow? They don't grow in Bravos. The whole thing. You guys know Lemon Gate, but I mean, he's he's a guy who is integral part to the Targaryens, uh, Master at Arms, and then I believe his brother. Let me pull this up real quick. I think his brother was in the Kingsguard, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, his brother was was yet yeah, uh, Jonathor Derry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So he was actually in the, in the, in the Kingsguard there. 
So yeah, just, just kind of a cool connection to their house and, um, how they're, how they, I think they will probably answer the call. Now, let me see if I can find this real quick. Cause this leads me into the, uh, the bastards and I might've clicked out of it, but there's theories on who oh, we got like a hundred tabs open here, um, on who the bastards might be. Mm -hmm. We might have to hold off on that and do it another time. No, that's that's okay. And uh, yeah, I mean House Dairy. And remember, there's actually a new house as House Lannister of Dairy. Yeah. Right. 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 Because uh, you know, Lancel is is granted Castle Dairy. Um, and they have their own sort of sigil. Let me pull it up on the screen here. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. Sorry, unfortunately, it doesn't know it scales weird here. Um, but you've got the Lannister and the uh Derry sigil there, but yeah, I mean, Willem Derry is this guy who is there when Rayella and remember the things surrounding Daenerys's birth kind of intriguing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about this uh earlier, you know, part one of this of this of this podcast. Um, when we do our big breakdown, is Daenerys is, you know, Rayella gets pregnant a re nine months, obviously before Daenerys is born, obvious, uh, Lee, but it's, we're like, we're well into the war of Robert's rebellion. Then Rhaegar is killed on the Trident air quote killed. And then she's sent off to Dragonstone. Yeah. Is it possible that she gets pregnant over there? I mean, what's the timeline look like? That she gets pregnant on Dragonstone. Oh. Because um, they're on Dragonstone for almost like a year. Right. Because, um, I mean, and also keep in mind, it takes Robert a year to finish the Trident, go down to King's Landing, finish that up and then like make their way over because it's like when Daenerys is born, they're like flee. Like it's like, we got to get out of here like right now. Yeah, they right for sure. So, um, yeah, do they, is there, they're, they are there a long time. And, but I guess like when she leaves, supposedly she's, she's pregnant, right? Right. Suppose. So, so yeah, that just, and that would have been, what year did you have, uh, it's 283, isn't it? Isn't that the year of the... Uh, 283. The, mm -hmm. It would have to be that Danny's born. Yeah, yeah. I guess I was what, trying to figure out when... Yeah, because it were... Yeah, or is it, are you trying to think, like, who could be the other... Right. Born 284, Dragon Sun, right? 284, yeah. Danny's born 284. Um, yeah, so she's there for a long time. I... I to me, I always just go back to it being mysterious that like this, that rail is still able to have children and, you know, uh, exactly because it's described as she had trouble and then he's uh, he, and then the Mad King has Viserys because there's theories that Danny might not even be the Mad King's daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be Rhaegar's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, and then you go down. He's to... also, you know, crazy. So. Who knows? <laughs> Mad King's right. like out of his mind at that point. Right. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me either if if Rayella was involved. I mean, loving her son and uh being involved in some secret plot to take his daughter, Rhaegar's daughter, or someone, right. you know, whatever, to Dragonstone and even or Cause, I, right. Because Daenerys describes, when she describes William Derry, she talks about, like, you know, we never had anyone except for William Derry, but he died when we were young, when I was young. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He dies when we were, when, when we were young. And so he, the answer is, I guess I think about House Derry, and I wonder um, if there's anyone left who knows or if there's people... Like, are there letters? Was there something left over that would tell us more about that story or give us more insight to uh, Danny's birth and and then what Willem Derry did and, and and all of that? Because they know, I mean, it's it's sort of well known, I guess, 
that he takes them away and, and is a part of that, their house is, is punished, if you will, for being Targaryen loyalists, but yet they're proud that they, that they were a part of that, that Willem was a part of rescuing and spiriting away, right? A, a, a princess and prince. And could have, and it could have been to Dorn even, right? Cause mm -hmm. lemon gate and all of that stuff. And so that would be, I mean, if that's, if that's, the, if the lemon, you know, the lemon gate is in Dorn and not Bravos, like we think, then now you can tie the Martells into House Derry, which mm -hmm. could tie a, a big deal with what's going on with Dorne right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the plotting yeah. and the scheming. Right, 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 right. Um, okay, so I just found something here. I was looking for this, and I was totally wrong about who, who this is. So I thought this was... Uh, so we've got her name is Nina uh, Fryo, maybe, mm -hmm. and she she writes on. I guess she wrote on wars and politics of ice and fire on their WordPress. Okay. If, you, if you ever search any theories and you're looking for pretty intense stuff, I thought it was uh, Br Brendan Beefish or whatever uh, his name is. He runs the podcast as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was this was his blog, but maybe not. So I was trying to give credit because I want to give credit because I'm about to read this here. And yeah. I think it's impressive and you should go check it out. So this is from War and Politics of Ice and Fire. And I was looking into, this is called The Shadows, uh, In the Shadows, The Plowman at the Gates. So again, our listeners love to go look up a lot of different theories and stuff. I'm just reading the conclusion of this just so I can bring up these potentials because I've seen these names tossed around as the dairy bastards. But either it being Tristan Rivers uh, or Humphrey Waters, the dairy bastards noted in Joffrey's declaration, um, it's that's just, that's the speculation is that the, it could be Tristan. It could be Humphrey waters. Nothing in the text specifically indicates that this bastard is still alive as of a dance with dragons or that he or she will return to the story. Nor is it important that um, even if the bastard of dairy returns, it would not be someone completely unknown. So nevertheless, the story has taken pains to point out the dairy's unwavering and costly loyalty to the Targaryen cause with such a, a uh, stringently Targaryen loyal family and a Targaryen pretender currently invading Westeros, a resurgence of the Darys under the revived Targaryen dynasty is perhaps a sensible turn for the narrative to take. If the bastard of Derry is a man already at play, so to speak, in the story, either Tristan Waters or Humphrey Waters seems a likely candidate. The would-be Viserys uh, III, once named House Derry, as a family likely to rally to his cause should he return to his homeland. That prince never made it back to Westerosi shores, but his support, his supposed nephew, um, more than successfully, more successful than he on that score may prove the truth of his words. So it's, it's a fascinating read. There's literally tons to this and I will not uh, read the entire thing because it is, is very well, well thought out, but it's awesome. It, it's also important to look at when you're looking at how scary, um, their connections, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. so you have, um, Mariah, I guess if you want to, uh, M A R I Y A, uh, is, um, she marries a fray, right? And they, uh, they actually, this house, house dairy marries into the phrase a little bit. If you actually mm -hmm. look at where they're located, right? They're just sort of down here in the Riverlands, just sort of by Heron Hall, but a lot of them marry into the phrase as well as the Boltons. Mm -hmm. um are who they're they're ma married into which are sort of two houses right that um are on i guess like the other side of the war if you want to view it from like the stark i guess you know perspective or perhaps even the targaryen perspective they're sort of certainly i guess in a way allied with the lannisters and you could have house dairy come in here and make some maneuvers that could sort of in two fell swoops almost end a lot of what's going on in the north and the riverlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms, in yeah. terms, in terms of like siege, the siege of power. I mean, cause you've got, I mean, the twins, you know, we all think Arya is going to come over and just kill all them perhaps, but maybe Lady Stoneheart's involved. Right. And so I, then again, also um, they're down here, but then you maybe do something with the Boltons too. Cause if uh, looking at it, I'll pull it up over here. How scary this this uh yeah. family family tree here but you're married into the phrase quite a bit i mean in multiple mm -hmm. children married into the phrase 
uh, and then you're married, and then Lancel's married in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, so you're married into the Lannisters too. So there's a lot of they could they could actually be this sort of as you said, come out of nowhere and have a lot of sway by who they who they're married to. Right. And it it seems like people want this house to kind of come back. And it has it has faced a lot that that what was striking to me, what led me to all this stuff is the fact that they have remained over the course of all these books, truly loyal. And they are trying to grow and keep their family alive. But the the male members are dying and you have someone I pulled him up here. I'm going to read about this guy real quick. So people are always wanting us to dive into characters we don't talk a whole lot about. And these are definitely all in a dance with dragons. And that's sort of why, because we're not quite there in our reread. But uh, the, the bastard, the potential bastard put forward uh, by Nina, uh, again, over on war and politics of ice and fire dot wordpress dot com uh, is Sir Tristan Rivers and being like a Westerosi sellsword then is in service with the Golden Company and he is a bastard. So he is an exiled bastard and an outlaw from the Riverlands and he's present during John Connington's rendezvous with the Gold Company three miles south um of Volantheris and voices a strong opinion on Alerio's plans. So he has this whole quote uh and whatnot. Just an interesting guy who is an outlawed uh individual, an exiled bastard. And you think about these individuals like Willem Derry, you think about uh what would happen to those members of House Derry and how they would be kind of ousted, right? Sent away. And if he could come back, I think uh and be he's he's definitely in in a position of power near young griff uh that would be yeah, kind of I mean, cool i mean dude look at the, look at this look at the, here's a character right like Mar- mariah maria i guess however you want to pronounce it uh yeah. dairy who marries merit Frey, and that's the guy who gets who gets hung right merit Frey is the guy who right uh, lady stoneheart there you yeah. don't really see anything about her other than that she's the daughter of her previous lord uh lord dairy and um She's there when Jamie is present right. at the castle. That's it. Mm-hmm. But my God, look at look at the marriages of her kids, dude. This isn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, here you go. Her her kids, right? Uh, marries Lancel Lannister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fat Walda, right? Mm-hmm. Frey uh, marries Roos Bolton, mm-hmm. and then little Walter Frey too. You know, we know like, is running little, around the little Walter, right? Mm-hmm. So I right. mean is yeah right yeah i mean like her kids are pretty a lot of political power Mm -hmm. across the board (laughs) yeah 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 it's it's interesting in that uh again she is in that in that dinner i think um again kind of pushing for a restoration of house dairy wanting to kind of bring it bring it back uh to its former status if you will so and, and definitely her um, her daughter is is as well through through Lancel. They're pleading their, their you know, they're the Brotherhood Without Banners is out there running around. They're trying to get Jamie to stay uh, and, and help out more instead of going on to River Run. But he has to go do that. So, yeah, it, it just was really interesting in the conversation about a bastard cousin and these other brothers for House Dairy come up and you can go around different places and, and look at House Dairy being mentioned and they just suffer so greatly. And they're they're in a prime spot, as you said, to to be a big deal. And yeah. they were, I mean, they're super important. Like from the get go, a member of their house took, I mean, helps rescue Danny and Viserys. They're 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 the, as close as you can get. Like the most loyal of loyal, right? They are the ones who preserve Danny and help her get away and, and all this kind of stuff. So they're in the thick of it. I I, I just feel like. There is way more there that hasn't been revealed. And again, to Nina's uh, post that I was reading, like we don't know if George is going to bring in a, a, a brand new character or did he just do that in this Tristan Waters and it being someone who was exiled with John Connington. These people know stuff, man. Like they are the people who kind of can come in later and they were exiled people who are going to come back and can tell more of the story or um, add some weight to to young Griff. So, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so, yeah, are you down to keep going here? Because this, I mean, <clears throat> yes. this is where, okay. Let's go. Let's keep diving. Okay. So, <clears throat> along the same line of, of thought, I was rolling into who else is kind of, and Jesus Christ, I mean, I've got so many.